What's up YouTube? In this video, I want to show you my DIY automatic closet light. It comes on when I open my closet and off when I close it. So this is Just Baron. On this channel, I do just about anything you can do yourself. So the closet behind me is my electronics closet where I keep all my gadgets and gizmos. Now the closet is usually normally dark, that's why I require a light. Now I have this light for about 10 years and about 2 years ago it stopped working. Some of the LEDs started to die out and the rest started to flicker. And since this is year 2020, I thought I would shed some new light on the closet behind me so I could get a clearer vision. Now this light originally ran on batteries and had a button to put it on and off. Now I know what you're thinking, I can easily go online and get one of these for really cheap but this wouldn't be much of a DIY channel and that would just be too easy. Also I really like this light because they are like these sub lights that I can change the angle of to shed light on different areas. So I want to fix it and give it a new life. I'm sure the internal circuits are good so I'll just try to replace the LEDs and then move on to automating the LEDs. So first I took down the light. I really like this closet light because I can control where the light goes and isolate areas in my closet. I took out the back screws and checked out the primary LED circuit. To my surprise, all the sub lights are in parallel, which is excellent so I can use a lower supply voltage. But this now requires a higher current, so trade-offs. Dismantling some more, I got to the LED circuit board for the sub lights. And again, I found each LED to be in parallel. I also found a 22 ohm protection resistor in series with each LED. This is great so I don't need to add one. Replacing these are going to be tedious, so I grabbed all the white LEDs I had and tried to find 12 identical ones to use. These are 5mm wide LEDs rated at 3 volts 20 milliamps, which means I'm going to need around 240 milliamps to power these at their brightest. But if I supply them with 3 volts, the current draw would be lower due to that 22 ohm protection resistor. Let me not waste any time and start switching these out. I set my solar iron to about 350 degrees Celsius and grabbed my solar sucker. These LEDs are dead, so it's safe to raise the heat and get that old solder nice and hot to be sucked up. Using some flux here also helps. I did this for all 3 LEDs in a sublight, making sure I don't overheat and damage the PCB. Then I added the new LEDs. I had to make sure they were in the right orientation and tested each one with my multimeter in diode mode. All shed light since they are in parallel. I actually messed up a couple of these and had to flip them around. What a noob. I repeated this for all the sublights and then screwed all of them back in. So yeah, what I actually have here is four working now um, lights that I can then put back into the into the main holder and then I'll be able to put this back in my closet. Now I still have a problem I need to work out which is how do I regulate power to this um, set of lights. Now I'm going to assume this brain board is dead because I want to use it back as a power distribution board. I cleaned it up and soldered the LED sub lights to it. These are all in parallel. To power the LEDs, I wanted to be able to use a wide supply voltage like 5 to 12 volts. So I needed a regulator to bring this down to 3 volts and supply at least 240 milliamps. I was thinking to use a low dropout linear regulator, but they tend to get hot, so I turned to a small buck converter I had lying around. I can use a small screwdriver to set the output voltage of the buck converter. With this, I can set the voltage to 3 volts, and once it supplies between 30 and 3 volts, it would maintain 3 volts, and it is rated at 3 amps, so I would be safe, even though the circuit will never pull that much. Testing the circuit, the light draws only about 150 milliamps, which is excellent. This means the 22 ohm resistor is reducing the current to about 12 milliamps for each LED. This makes the LEDs dimmer, but they have a longer life. These are still pretty bright at this current, so I wouldn't change the voltage. Now I could move on to the external connectors. So I want to automate the light so it comes on when I open the closet and it comes off when I close it. 
I sat down and thought really hard. I could use a Raspberry Pi and use face detection so only when my face is in the closet the light would come on. But then I would still need something to light up my face in the dark. So back to square one. I could use a PR motion sensor but I would need an Arduino and a relay and use a timer to keep it on for some time. Then I might end up wasting energy as it waits to come off. How dare you! I need to do my part for climate change. And well, LiDAR is so 2019. I didn't want to use a magnetic read switch like the one on my main door. Still, it turns out that the one I have shouldn't be used for currents above 100 milliamps, and I had to settle with a normally closed limit switch. This works such that when you press it, the circuit is broken, and when you release it, the circuit is closed, turning on the light. This one I have here has three contacts. One is a common connector, the other is a normally open, and the third is a normally closed. We need to use a normally closed connector and a common. When the closet is closed, it will press the switch taking off the light, and when the closet is open, it will release the switch turning on the light. The switch is rated at 5 amps, so it will do great. Easy. So it's time to solder and secure the buck converter. To power the regulator, I decided to use a female 2.1mm barrel jack since most of my power adapters use it, even Arduino. I cut off some of the plastic of the seam of the light. This is to add a switch and I also added a JST-XH connector in parallel with the switch to connect the limit switch later. I used some hot glue to hold everything in place. Once everything is soldered in, a quick test of the switch and then shorting the JST connector, it works and the light is finished and I can now screw everything back up. So this is the present circuit diagram. I decided to use this limit switch instead since I had it. It is similar to the first one but the switch is bigger as I got it from a printer. It works the same way. I added crimps and used a female JST-XH connector so it can be easily connected to the light but also be removable. I reinstalled the light and measured where I wanted the limit switch to go. Using a half inch gypsum screw, I screwed and secured the switch such that the door presses it when it's closed. Once that was done, I had to extend the light power to the nearest plug. I built a 12 foot extension from a wire I had and I used a male and female barrel plug for the ends. To power the light, I got this 9 volt 650 milliamp power adapter, which has more than enough current to power the light. I hid all the wires and now it was time for the moment of truth. And it works. This is sure to brighten up my day. I like this project because it is simple and it offers a lot of light and I got to bring back to life something I already have. Also, there is no time or programming required so anyone can do it. So I hope you like this project and let me know in the comment section below how you would have done this project. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and if you like this channel and want to get notifications on more videos, do consider hitting that subscribe button and as always, you can always leave your mark in the comment section below. So this is Just Sparron, Just DIY, Just Do It Yourself, Just Be Yourself, that's all anybody can ask of you and see you in the next video.